good kitten internet. I thought I would play something a little different. It takes a long time for it to load for reference because it's loading in sound fonts. Um, this will be Master of Magic. Specifically, this is the brand new expansion to Master of Magic. So I should probably explain. Well, first opening. And yes, I am actually using my green screen now. This is the official opening Old for us. Man, you seek the spell of mastery. You have come to me. My work has already met with you. If that is the truth, then your then work you must, must stop. <laughs> Yeah, 3D graphics! Yep, very impressive opening. So, um, first off, Master of Magic is not exactly a new game. To put it mildly, um, I alt tabbed, so it's gonna be paused for a moment. Because unfortunately, the way I'm recording this, it's needing to be in full screen, otherwise, things don't work correctly. Um, when was Master of Magic released, anyway? Originally, not uh, 1984. Um, this is a micro prose game, and this is one of two or well, three, actually, given who it is, three genre defining games that micro prose made. Uh, the first being Civilization, and then they said, and that's the genre of 4X. Um, I should have prepped in advance, but I have a kitty on my lap, and it's his birthday, so I'm really not going to move around. So, um, 4X, for reference, stands for Explore, Expand, Exploit, and Exterminate. Uh, it's the style and genre of game that was founded by Civilization. Um... Master of Magic is made by the same publisher, not really the same developers, though. And there's some in common, but not really. Um, so this was made in 1996, and this is an official expansion for Master of Magic. So what ended up happening is that there is a game company, I believe it's called Slytherin, or Slytherine. Uh, hopefully editor me will remember. Yep, there we go. Slytherin. Um, they're the publishers, and they really, really liked a mod that they had found for Master of Magic. Uh, so much that not only did they buy the rights to the mod, or it might have been members of the publishing community, uh, the publishers themselves that had modded it, whatever, they bought the rights to the game. So Slytherin actually bought the rights to Master of Magic to specifically release their mod. And to give you an idea of... How recent this is, um, the version of the mod that I am running was last patched on July 7th, 2020, that is. So less than a month old from when I'm recording this. I'm recording this on August 1st. I know this because it's Isin's birthday. It's his 10th birthday today. He's on my lap, so you can't really see him, and I'm not going to disturb him on his birthday. So, um, I have not played Master of Magic outside of official patches. Um, I take that back. I have played um, Carob's patch. Uh, Carib is a member of the community that tends to do unofficial patches for 4X games. Uh, Carib is also one of the leading experts of Alpha Centauri. Um, so I have not played anything beyond just a bug fix patch. So while I'm very used to Master of Magic, on one hand, on the other hand, I have never touched the, um, whatchamacallit, um, DLC, expansion, mod, whatever you want to call it. So all I've done is hit new game and haven't even started a game yet. So I don't know what I'm going to be hitting. I'm sure that there's balance changes. This will be interesting. Um, so the first thing I noticed is that, okay, so if you right click on things, you get a difficulty listing. And um, yeah, most of this is actually from the base game. So for reference, in 4X games, especially ones developed by Microprose, but in general, or Microprose or Fire Axis, 
in general, most 4X games, um, usually there's a difficulty level that is roughly equal. Um, that's what fair is listed, by the way. That's the AI is playing normally. They are not getting any significant advantages. Anything above that, the AI itself doesn't change. It's more that they get a bunch of advantages. Um, so I have actually beaten Master of Magic on the highest difficulty before, multiple times. Uh, that's kind of why I stopped playing, is that it was completely not a challenge. And I'm going to be playing it on fair today, because I figured since fair is listed as the AI is playing normally, that's what I'm going to go for. Opponents. So, unlike a game like Civilization, where usually in Civilization you have seven civs on the map for Civilization 1, um, in Master of Magic you have a maximum of five players, four of which are opponents. Uh, there actually is a multiplayer mod to this game, by the way, so I'm not going to be playing that, but that's why I'm phrasing it as players. Uh, land size. So... In regular Master of Magic, the game is only in the tiny, small, and fair range. Large and huge, I don't believe, actually existed in base game of Master of Magic. Maybe large was the largest? Uh, huge is definitely larger. Uh, power. So, game being Master of Magic, there's magic involved. Um, what I was saying earlier about this being a genre-defining game. So, the same studio made a Space 4X game, the first Space 4X game that I'm aware of, that many of you have probably f are familiar with, which is Master of Orion. Uh, Master of Magic is running on an improved version of the Master of Orion engine. So, think of Master of Magic like a mod of Master of Orion, for lack of a better way of phrasing it. Um, so, Master of Orion is kind of the granddaddy of the spacefaring 4X games, Master of Magic is the granddaddy of the Legends-based 4X games, the ones that are fantasy with magic and dragons and those fun things. Um, pretty much every fantasy 4X game takes its page from either Master of Magic or another game that took its page from Master of Magic. Um, there's a whole bunch of different remakes of Master of Magic. Um, I have all of them. Um... <laughs> Not really, but um, the Age of Wonders series is a major one. Uh, Age of Wonders 1 was absolutely based off of Master of Magic. Um, you also have the Endless Legend series. The Endless Legend series is... Or, series. It's a single game. Endless Legend is a great game. It is based off of Master of Magic. Anyway, uh, Magic Intensity, Minerals, and Climate. You can normally specify the Magic Intensity. I'm just going to keep it at fair. Uh, minerals and Climate is new to me. Not familiar with having the ability to change those. I'm just going to leave them as default. So here is when you select your wizard. And this is one of the changes that I was warned about. Is that they buffed up the levels of all of the wizards a little bit. Which is good because they were pretty bad before. Um, if you were to play on the higher difficulties, one of the things that they... Uh, one of the AI advantages is that they get a bunch of extra abilities on this. And don't worry, we will be, in fact, checking to see what these abilities are, because I'm going to make a custom character, because I always do. When you make a custom character, you choose a portrait. This is very important, because whatever portrait you choose will not uh, will be make sure that that wizard is not in the game. Um, personally, I like going with Kali. I like her appearance. Um, and yes, there's... Ah, I can actually see a face in there now. That was supposed to be solid black. Um, yeah, there's definitely some stereotypes in here. The This is a historical document, as I've heard um, one Sam DeLev state. Um, I will recognize that there is definitely significant sexism and racism in a lot of the games of my past. And there's probably not going to be an exception. Anyway, I'm going with Khalid because she looks cool. Alright, so this is the point of the game that kind of goes off the rails if you're a normal Civ player, um, or an Alpha Centauri player, or any other 4X game other than other fantasy 4X games. You choose your books of magic. So in regular Master of Magic, you have 11 picks. You now have 12. That's one of the things I was warned about, which allows you to actually use an ability. So there are a total of 11 books on, or no, 10 books...
They must have removed book 11 for everything. I was not warned about that one. Anyway, there's a total of 10 books on here. What each of these books represent is what percentage of spells will be available to you in the game, roughly. Um, so if you have 10 books, that means you have 100% of that school of magic available to you in the game. Magic is researched like technologies are in Civ-based games. So, unlike normal 4X games, you don't share the same tech tree as other players. In fact, you're basically customizing your own tech tree. One of the things that I was warned about and that you normally can't do is that you normally can't have both life and death books at the same time. Uh, there's a good reason for that because they kind of overlap each other, to be honest, and they counteract each other. They did remove that as a part of this mod. I don't know why. In addition, your picks can be used for these abilities up here. Like, for instance, I can gain alchemy, which allows me to convert gold to mana and mana to gold at a one-to-one -one ratio. Normally, you lose 50% of your um, conversion. So if I converted 200 gold, I would normally get 100 mana. Um, in addition... Um, you also end up getting plus one to hit magical weapons. You're going to start noticing some terminology that may sound familiar to those that are either role players or table or um, tabletop gamers, shall I say? And that's because Master of Magic is a mixture of Civilization and Magic: The Gathering. Green, blue, red, white, black. For those that are familiar with Magic: The Gathering you're going to notice a lot of things in common. Um, so let's go through the picks. As my housemate leaves, sorry. Um, oh, you'll notice that I'm not wearing headphones. Um, this game does not have audio that conflicts with my voice. So I'm using RTX voice in order to speak. And RTX voice is an extremely efficient noise cancellation system. Or not really efficient, extremely effective. That's the correct term. Um, as a result, normally I have to wear headphones, that way you don't overhear the music that's playing. Um, in this case, I don't have to. My microphone's just right here, right off camera. You can see now the edge of my green screen. Uh, maybe I'll adjust that at some other point. But, um, yeah, so I don't have to wear headphones, and I'm listening to the music just like you. It's great. Anyway, um, Warlord levels up all of your normal units, which are units that are not summoned. Uh, in addition, you can get one extra level above and beyond um, your maximum level. So normally, your regular units level up to a maximum of Veteran. Um, this allows you to level up to a maximum of Warlord. There's a couple of other ways to level up to a maximum of Warlord, and at least in Base Master of Magic, and I have a Hunt that they've actually changed this um you can actually stack those together and end up going into vampiric level which is more the game actually stepping into memory and just taking the next available title um mutually exclusive with tactician tactician's a new one i think normally it's just the yeah it's normally two columns worth so i have no idea what these are interesting so tactician Plus one defense during combat. Heroes are gained plus two defense resistance in all attack strengths. Interesting. Channeler allows you to cast spells in combat without penalty, um, regardless of range. So, oh, and um, half range penalty while banished. Interesting. So, um, in. So yeah, these have been a little rebalanced. So basically, you have spells that you can cast out of combat and spells that you can cast in combat. And usually the ones that cast that you cast in combat only last for combat and you pay a percentage penalty based off of the range. So if like, for instance, you're fighting in combat inside of your capital city, you actually spend half as much as normal. Um, whereas if you're fighting a battle on a different plane of existence, you're spending, I think it went up to 3x, so three times the amount of energy. It may have been 5x, I don't remember anymore. Um, I see. He's no longer on my lap, so I may end up taking a break just so I can get something to drink. Hello, birthday boy. As I said, it's Isun and Zun's 10th birthday today. 
Um, Archmage. So Archmage um, increases the SP used to improve casting skill by 50%. I'll explain what casting skill is when I get into the game, because I don't think it's viable for me to explain while I'm showing you things. Uh, Artificer allows you to make magic items 50% cheaper, and other arcane spells. So arcane spells, for those that are in Magic the Gathering parlance, these are colorless spells. Um, arcane spells are spells that any caster can learn. Um, one of the ways to speedrun slash obliterate the game in every possible way is to minimize the number of books that you have. That way you just immediately start learning all of the high level arcane spells, including the spell that allows you to win the game. Um, one of many ways. So yeah, artificers also start with enchant item. Enchant item is the weaker version of enchant artifact or some artifact. I think it's enchant artifact. Anyway, um, I'll explain those when we get there. Conjurer. Hey, look, summoning spells cost less. And it reduces the maintenance cost of fantastic creatures. So when I summon stuff, which are fantastic creatures for reference, um, they're going to have upkeep costs. Regular units have upkeep costs, and usually in gold and or food. Fantastic units have upkeep costs in mana. And heroes frequently have upkeep costs in both. Um, Sage Master. Uh, it increases research speed and grants additional 15 research points a turn. That's a really good option for me. Mirin. So, one interesting thing about this game is that there are two planes of existence that are in the game. Uh, you have Arcanus and Mirror. Um, if you're Mirin, you get to start with the more unusual races. Um, these are Beastmen, Dark Elves, Draconians, Dwarves, and Trolls. One thing to note, and one thing that I am proud to actually say, they don't treat Dark Elves as evil. It's just that you are on another plane of existence where you don't Actually, and you don't... What's the best way of phrasing it? The difference between High Elves and Dark Elves isn't that one fell, one's evil, or anything like that that D&D has to deal with. It's just the fact that you come from another plane of existence. Another planet, if you will. And Mirror is effectively underground. So, it's kind of like an Underdark, but not really. Dardian. Um, This is a new one, I think. I don't recognize it, but it could just be that I never take it. Because I usually don't bother with any of the retorts, or what these are called. Um, increased morale. Increased maximum population in cities that are the wizard's home race. Huh. That's an interesting one to choose. Famous is frequently the one that I choose. Um, so fame is a stat, and you use fame in order to recruit heroes. Or get a chance to buy magic items, or mercenaries for sale, or a whole bunch of other things. Um, yeah. So, there's going to be heroes. They're going to be awesome. Rune Master allows you to dispel things and uh, more easily research arcane spells. Um, and you have 150% bonus to resistance against dispelling. Interesting. I don't remember if that was actually part of it, but basically enemies can dispel your enchantments. So Rune Master allows you to be stronger resistance against that. Charismatic. Um, you pay half for maintenance for hiring heroes, mercenaries, buying magic items. And diplomatic penalties are halved and diplomatic bonuses are doubled. So Charismatic is another really good one that I frequently start with. Specialist, we already looked... No, we didn't. We looked at Tachyashi. Specialist is one of the new ones. Um... Interesting. So, basically, Specialist is like a 50% version of Rune Master and Sage Master? Yeah, it's kind of like half Sage Master, half Rune Master. Interesting. Omniscient. Um, proofs performance of cities. Interesting. Huh, I guess this actually gives me incentive to have a whole bunch of books in different areas. Um, the downside with that is that it's random as to what spells you actually get from those, like, one book type of things. You can pick up more books in-game from goodie huts. 
um, which I'll explain a bit later. That's a really interesting one. Cult leader. Uh, increases power from religious buildings, decreases unrest. Interesting. Okay, that's a useful ability. Astrologer. Extra node power. Oh, wow. For two power for each year that elapsed since the start of the game. Holy crap, that would be ridiculously awesome. And then there's Spellweaver. Reduces the cost of non-summoning, non-item creation overland spells. Okay. So, um, spellcasting. I am just going to do that now. Um, life is my favorite of the magics to use. That doesn't mean it's... It's not necessarily that it's the best. It's that it fits my playstyle the best. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm necessarily... That's gonna be weird. Um, it's not necessarily... I'm used to being able to go with 11 picks, and that's gonna throw me off. Because the difference between 10 picks and 11 picks in base game was that you start with quite a bit more spells. Um, I think with 10 picks you start with one uncommon and three common or something like that, but you don't start with any rare spells or very rare. Maybe it was rare, common, uh, rare, uncommon, common. Anyway, you get to start with a much higher level spell than normal, and you can randomly get one of the best spells in the game right at the start. You can't really afford to cast it, but okay. So I have two picks. I really liked... Um... So Omniscient would be really nice if I split my things out. Life, unfortunately, only gives money, and I don't really care that much about money, to be honest. Although that does increase growth, now that I think about it. Um... Astrologer seemed really interesting. Maybe I'll go Famous Astrologer in 10 Books of Life. This is banned to being a series that I do multiple games of, by the way. I have almost been speaking for a half an hour straight without actually starting the game yet. This is probably just going to be an intro video, I think. Yeah, we'll go with that. Yep, it's so it's common and uncommon. It actually reset things. So if I instead did something like this... Or I'm life in chaos. Now I have starting chaos spells and starting life spells. Oh! No, it's starting me with all the common. Interesting. Oh. I had already decided. Um, although I will admit, now that I actually have two perks, mirroring is really tempting. Starting a mirror is potentially extremely powerful. Like... This is an extremely powerful combination, because Mirror has more magic than normal, and unfortunately, Mirror also has much more powerful random monsters. Um, Astrologer would allow me to gain even more power from those nodes that I'd be gaining somehow. It's probably going to be a lot of Grown Um, ooh. Oh, I'm not used to actually having all these choices. I'm gonna go Famous Charismatic. So, I like the idea of having more growth than normal. Where was that? Oh, Guardian. Home race population increases by six. I'm gonna go against that. Because I frequently like having diverse populations, which we'll get to in a moment. Famous Astrologer or Mirren Astrologer? So Mirren and Mirren in regular Master of Magic cost three picks, which is why I hardly ever chose it. But it makes for a really interesting game because the mirror races are fascinating and awesome in a lot of ways. Um, especially if you get random races jumped into your empire. My preference on starting... Species. I should use the term species and not race. Um, my preference on starting species, though, is usually not Mirren. You know what? Alright. So, um, starting spells for level 1. Uh, Guardian Spirit is actually a really nice starting spell. 
Just Cause is really nice too, because that increases fame and reduces unrest. Wait, reduces unrest? I don't remember that effect. But having an extra 10 fame is really nice. Starfires is an attack that only works against summon monsters. Um, Bless allows you to gain resistance against death or chaos. Um, Endurance gives you extra movement speed and defense. Which is nice, don't get me wrong. Uh, Holy Weapon gives you an enchanted weapon. Uh, healing does exactly what you think it does. Holy Armor um, gives you an extra defense bonus, and if your units have low defense, you get even more defense bonus. But the more important part is that it has no upkeep cost. Um, Heavenly Light allows you to increase the defensive power of a city, basically. Um, oh, and it actually generates three power. I mean, some of this is probably that I just never noticed. The reason why I like Guardian Spirit, so there's, um, well, I'll, I'll have to explain it later, but Guardian Spirits all have really good stats for the very start of the game. Uh, let's see, Stream of Life is always nice. Well, four mana turns nasty. Prayer is useful. Altar of Peace, that's new. Generates research. Equal to 12 times the average relation with all... This is definitely a new spell. I don't recognize this at all. Huh. So it's a spell that increases your research production as long as you're friends with everybody. Unicorns are nice. I in order. What the heck? Wow. I'm gonna go with True Sight and Unicorns to start. All right, so this is the part that I wanted to show. So um, my usual starting I'm going to use species, is halfling. Halflings are really nice in some ways and awful in others. So... Mm, sounds like my halfmate's moving around. Um, so, uh, first, let me show a normal unit. Um, I believe that would be orcs. Yeah, orcs are normal. Yeah, for once in this game, orcs are perfectly normal units. Um, farmers produce two food. Workers produce two production, and rebels don't do anything. They're unhappy people. Um, halflings instead produce three food, which is extremely nice. Um, you can also have a bit of a higher population, but the downside is that they can't build as many buildings. So unlike in, say, a Civ game, where you do research and you discover the ability to build libraries, for an example, in Master of Magic, you can build everything from the start, but each species can only build their own set of buildings. Orcs, their advantage is the fact they can build every building. Um, their disadvantage is that they're not really all that great other than their units are cheap. Um, halflings, on the other hand, can't really build... Uh, like, most b buildings are impossible to build as halflings. But that also means that they're high-end military units are much easier to get. You don't need a bunch of buildings in order to get them. Um, also, it, they're lucky, they're hard to kill, and they also get extra research. That doesn't sound familiar. Um, Dark Elves are actually what I normally choose if I go with Mirror, because they generate power on their own, and all of their military units have ranged attacks. I am a huge fan of ranged attacks in this game. And I'm thinking about going with Draconian instead. So Draconians um, only receive half of a power per population. So basically every two population receives one power. But all of their units fly. And they have fire breathing. And that sounds awesome. Um, there's dwarves, which produce more um, resources than normal, which is also really nice. 
but they can't build a huge chunk of buildings, and they grow really slowly. Um, huh. It doesn't mention Dark Elves growing slowly, which they definitely do in base game. It makes me wonder if they've tweaked that too. Um, High Elves are a good option as well. Oh yeah, High Elves grow very slowly. Okay, yeah, grow slowly, there it is. Uh, trolls? Trolls regenerate themselves, so if you don't kill a unit by end of combat, it's fully healed. <laughs> um, but there's fewer of them per unit, which I'll get to in a bit. And they can't build the upper end of buildings, but, I mean, they're reasonably good. Okay. Unest. It's supposed to be unrest. Um, Beastmen are basically the orcs of Mirror, where they're fairly average. They can build almost everything. Uh, there's nothing particularly wrong with them. Uh, the main advantage is the fact that they don't actually produce all that much unrest if your capital is Beastmen. Except for High Men. High Men hate Beastmen, apparently. Uh, it's good that it's actually telling me these things because. They don't normally tell you these things in base game. Um, the one species I should point out are the Clackens. Clackens are, in fact, from Masters of Orion, or Master of Orion. Clacken are basically the dwarves of Arcanus. But they have horrible unrest. Basically, Clackens, if you conquer another Clacken city, you get a whole bunch of bonus happiness which is great if you conquer anybody else you get horrible unhappiness like plus four from dark elves plus four from dragons uh the draconians get horrible unrest from clackens high men gn uh gnolls gnolls dw dwarves Minus one LI. Lizard men are at minus one. Interesting. NO nomads are at zero. Oops, wrong one. Nomads are at zero. O is at one. And T is at three. T are trolls. O are orcs. Yeah, let's try draconians. I have not started as draconians before. And I'm going to go with purple, unlike my normal preference for green. I just like the shade of purple that they have for the game. All right. I spent over a half an hour. Uh, we're going to have a long load time because, again, it's loading in sound fonts. Um, this is actually a bug in... I don't think this is actually a bug in DOSBox. I think this might actually be a bug in the game itself because I think if you have a real role in MT32, it does the same thing. Also, for those of you that have played Master of Magic, you may have noticed that the music sounds slightly different. The reason being is that I have a role in MT32. Well, I'm using Munt, but... I have an emulated Roland MT32, so we're going to be hearing the Roland MT32 music instead. So, my starting city, I'm gonna. I like using default names for things. So, we're going to. Actually, this is a good place for me to stop and then start another recording. That way, I've done the introduction and so on, and then we can actually get into playing. So, it'll also give me a chance to get something to drink and actually eat something today. I just realized I have not had. I've had, um, tater tots. Broccoli and cheese tater tots. Yeah. I'll talk to you next time, Internet. Bye!